we're going to take a look inside my Dreamcast. Hi, welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and today we're going to take a look at my modified Sega Dreamcast. Now, I did a load of mods on this not long before I started posting videos on this channel, so I didn't actually document any of the process on video while I was doing it. I recently did a GameCube upgrade where I did a, a silent fan mod and installed a similar silent fan to the one I put in here, and I found a way of making it quieter still by adding a resistor. Now, I couldn't remember if I'd done that when I put it in the Dreamcast, so I'm going to open that up today and take a look and do that upgrade if I need to, but I figured while I had it open, I'd show you all the different mods I've got in here. You'll see just why I love this console even more than I did already. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are. I've always been a fan of Sega's Dreamcast console. Four players. It was the first console that really, for me, brought the arcade home, that they could genuinely have direct ports from Sega's arcade machines running on this box. I loved it at the time. It was really disappointing when it was discontinued, but it's lived on and it's still one of my favourite consoles now. If you've never really tried one, there is a whole selection of stuff out there that you can have a go at. All right, so Sega's Dreamcast was way ahead of its time. It played direct ports of arcade machines, four players, online gaming capabilities when that was just like still on dial-up. It was really ambitious and ultimately a commercial failure. However, what we've got here is still a really phenomenal console that will play some superb games. Uh, in terms of connections and the AV out, it's designed for outputting to older type TVs and it ran on optical media which can fail over time and the lasers can fail over time and it had older components in it as well because this was launched in 1999 which is like over 20 years ago now. It's an old console but it's one of my favourites and I really went to town in terms of doing upgrades on this not long ago. What I did was I replaced the optical disk drive where the discs go in with this SD card interface called GDMU, which is an emulator for the GD-ROMs, which was the optical media that the Dreamcast used. So the SD cards plug in to this little drive here. Uh, so that just lifts out a bit. They plug in and then that sits comfortably in there. Now this SD card reader and these 3D printed parts in the tray, they're like extras to neaten off. Inside is the actual hardware, which I'll show you in a moment. Other mods that I've done on this is a power supply upgrade. You can see on the back where the regular AC in is, that's been replaced with this one here and the sort of 3D printed surround to neaten it up. You'll be able to see through the gap here, maybe just about that I've replaced with the Noxua fan like I did on my GameCube recently. And also because in the UK, UK on the PAL Dreamcast instead of having the orange swirl on there which had an orange LED to match it uh, we got a blue swirl but the orange LED so I replaced the orange LED with a blue one so that all matches up and that looks really nice. This did get quite yellowed a while back and I also did a process called Retro Bright on that to bring it back up to its original grey colour. So what we'll do next is we'll open it up and take a look inside and investigate what's going on with the fan and see if I need to add a resistor in that. Now to open this up it's gloriously old-fashioned there is simply just one two three four screws screws in there you need to remove the modem so this is what was used for the internet capabilities and you plug your phone line cable in there and it connect online playing things like fantasy star but other than that just four crosshead screws nothing fancy no security screws like the nintendo consoles use let's see i found a screwdriver hopefully this will work okay there we go So once all the screws are out, I'll flip it over. Now that would normally lift off and separate completely. However, because there's all of this in here, it might be slightly awkward. So that will lift off there. And then you'll see that there is a ribbon. If I just bring that around there, you'll see that the 3D printed section is screwed into where the top goes there. And that ribbon feeds through to this point. So that's just like a separate card reader but the design of this is to put that in place you'll notice also this little gray button and that leads up to this point which hits the reset switch on the gdmu so what i'll do is i'll just take out my sd card reader from there at the moment so that just extends to there so that can move the lid out of the way inside here what we previously had was the old power supply which was really big uh, this one is the pico psu which is like a, a much smaller scaled down power supply um, that connects up to all of this at the front and this little section at the back. So that's like a 3D printed bit that slots in. The 
the Pico PSU goes there. So previously in here were a lot of big bits and capacitors. And the thing is, when you're running the GDMU, which is simply just plug an SD card in with some uh, software called GD Menu and a load of game files, it simply loads those up on screen as you game and you scroll through and you choose what you want to play. So it's a simple bit of hardware, well, it's a very clever bit of hardware, but physically quite simple, just a board that goes in there. There's also a 3D printed mount um, that I bought. So all this 3D printed stuff I bought on eBay at the time. So if you're doing these sorts of jobs, um, you can buy those parts. So I got the, the tray insert that goes in the top. I got the mount for the GDMU to sit flush i mean you can just pop these things in and have them wobbling about if you're not that bothered you could even do without that tray and just reach through the, the gap in the lid to put the cards straight in here but the extender i found was neater and easier there's a 3d printed shroud to go around the noctua fan upgrade that's gone in there so looking at what i've got on here there is a resistor in place there already so i don't need to do that modification it's already as quiet as it's going to be i just wanted to open up and take a little look at that and that's no problem you'll see that the pico psu power supply mounts onto the motherboard the motherboard's got like some pins poking up here so that just simply slots on there this cable plugs in which goes to the power supply um and everything else is all in place on the actual board itself as i say i replaced for a blue power led I replaced the battery. Now I did a battery replacement in my GameCube recently where I soldered a battery straight in. This one is like a little battery socket. So you can just take out a normal 2032 battery and plug in and come out. So the Noctua fan is mounted on a funny little angle there. So that's where the, the bracket comes in handy there. So quiet fan mod, replace the disc drive with this optical drive. Power supply is made to a more modern, more efficient power supply. There was, there was something else. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. There was something else on this um, control board that was, that was some sort of upgrade as well, but I can't remember what that was now. It was it was a while ago that I did it all. But I just thought while I got it open, it might be quite interesting to have a look in there. Now, it was quite expensive. Um, the boards, the, this is not one of the original GDMU boards. This is like a clone one, so it was cheaper. Um, but it all mounts up, you know, a few pounds here, a few pounds there. One of the other mods that you can do is the video out. You can get a VGA cable, but a lot of modern TVs don't have the VGA um, input now. So you can do an HDMI mod, which is really quite involved with some very delicate soldering. It looks awesome. But I went a different route and I used this Kaiko adapter. I've done a number of reviews for the different Kaiko adapters, uh, but the Dreamcast one was the first one I got. It's dead simple. It barely even needs a demonstration. This bit plugs into the video port in the back of the console and then you get an HDMI input there. Um, you plug in, there's a little LED that lights up when it's connected properly and that will take the video and sound. This is the box for it, HDMI adapter for Sega Dreamcast. It works on NTSC and PAL consoles. Now this is a PAL console, the European one, so I was really happy with, with using it for that. It works on all HD TVs and it outputs 480p resolution um, at 60 hertz, which is the maximum Dreamcast output. So unless you go in upscaling that further, that is, it looks brilliant on my TV. I've got like a 50 inch 4K screen and it looks great on there. Um, right, let's get this back together. So my extender card goes back into the reader here. Now what I tend to do with this is I'll have different game collections on different SD cards and I just sort of sit them in this tray here and, and swap them around. So there we go. So there we have it, that is it. Uh, Sega Dreamcast, super modded, and I still love playing on this thing. I think it's an awesome console. And if you're thinking about giving that a go, it's relatively straightforward mods, not much in the way of soldering involved. You just take things out, replace them, put them in. Yeah, it's nice to, to be able to show you that. So there you go, a little bit of a look into one of my favorite consoles. I think it's a close run thing between my GameCube and my Dreamcast for my favorite console. Um, of all time i think i love them both and i love the mods that i've been able to do to them i thought it was a shame that i did all of the modifications on this gamecube before starting my channel started making videos for the channel not long after i completed this project and i think this would have made an excellent series of videos so if i ever do one again let me know if you're interested in me making some tutorials as i go through those steps but in the meantime it was just nice to share that with you it's a console that i'm really fond of anyway and i think these upgrades really really add to the overall experience being able to load it up it's super quiet now having the noise from the disc and the fan uh, being able to navigate through menus and choose games and have them load quickly all the load times are great you can still save 
using your, your little visual memory unit. There's a whole load of homebrew stuff out there that you can play or other arcade conversions that were never officially released on the Dreamcast. Things like the Atomis Wave games, uh, give them a Google. There's, there's some really cool stuff. That was a little look at this console. I've got a whole load of projects planned, so lots more videos coming. If you haven't already subscribed and you like this kind of thing, then please do consider it. I would really appreciate it. Turn on notifications so that you know when I've uploaded something new. If you like this, please leave a like, leave a comment if there's something you want to say. If there's a mod that I haven't done that you think I might dig on this, then let me know. And um, I'll see you next time. So thanks. Bye.